Hey, what is going on? You guys, Tony here, CCXRC. Today on the bench, I have something awesome and brand new sent to me by Arma. This is the newest 3S lineup truck that they've got, the Vortex. Uh, some of you may have seen some pictures that got leaked out a little bit early, but this is it. And uh, things we didn't know about it is this may be the most advanced 3S BLX in their lineup yet. So I'm excited to take a look at that and see all of the things inside of here, the upgrades that they've made to this. And uh, there's a couple of them that are pretty big. So uh, let's do it. Alrighty guys, here it is. We're gonna take some time to look at the box because there are no sheets about this out right now. We can't see the details on this vehicle. So what we're gonna know about it is gonna be on the box. So this is before the release of this vehicle and we don't have any information about it. So we gotta do a little bit of research and we're gonna do it with you. The first little bit of research that I'm seeing is this. This is new to the 3S lineup, AVC smart DSMR compatible. Um, that isn't new, but the AVC option is new. Uh, it is the 3S BLX 4x4 ready to run series. They're saying 60 plus miles per hour with 3S LiPo and optional pinion gear. So um, that would be pretty quick for this lineup. Uh, let's spin around to the side here. Here's some of the uh, other features about it. So it's a, oh, it's a DX3 controller. So that is a, a little bit nicer controller. Than, uh, than some of the other ones had come with. Um, it says 6200A, SR6200A receiver. And that is where we're gonna get our AVC control from. Smart as well, so it'll give us a, a readout of our battery life left on the controller. Um, it is an upgraded 15% more torque than the other 3S vehicles for improved steering fuel. That's nice. 100 amp ESC Smart Spectrum uh, ESC and uh, 3660-3200 kV brushless motor, heat sink, and cooling fan. One of the things that they're wanting to point out here as well is that it is compatible because of this new receiver um, and controller with the Spectrum dashboard and smart technology to get your ESC temperatures, uh, connecting your uh, radio to the receiver via a Bluetooth module. Um, that I have right here. It is the BT2000 Bluetooth module. Uh, I have one that I'm gonna install in a different video and show you guys how all of this works and the features uh, and how it goes into the controller. And then also we'll show you uh, how to mount it up with the little phone connector that ends up going right on the top of the radio and holds it so you have um, all of the information that they're showing here right at your fingertips. So uh, let's move on from this to the other sides of the box here. Quickly going through, uh, this is very similar, easy removal of the front and rear diffs, easy removal of the uh, power module motors, all of that very simple setup to get that out. I love that system for new people getting in. It makes it so easy to get in and work on all of this stuff. Um, these look like some new wheels and tires. They are gunmetal gray, like the look of them. Um, here they're saying heavy duty steel input, 1.35 mod, 37 tooth uh, and 13 tooth, like bevel gear set here. So pinion and, and bevel gear on the diff. 1.35 mods and um, that is very, very nice. Uh, down here, we're going to see the castellated slipper pad, sliding gear mesh that they have right here, two screws. We're not going to pull this apart to see it, so it's nice that it's on the box to show us what is internal on this, because I'm not going to break the car down that far. Um, so, uh, what do we got here? Body protectors, skids on the top, an integrated wing, uh, plastic lock nut for the slipper, power module with dirt management, um, and then the strong chassis and retained hinge 
pin plates here that are metal, uh, as well as steering with stone clearance, they're saying here, uh, for the way the, the module is set up on that. Other side, we'll go around real quick and just see what's here. Motor heatsink fan. It talks about some of the stuff we've already seen. Strong composite chassis. Uh, power module, again, is talking about the 1.35 mod uh, differential. And then the diff metal gears here, internal. Um, and silicone O-rings. The sealed ball bearings throughout. Again, it talks about the 37 tooth 1.35 mod. We will know that that is what is running on that bevel gear. It is part of the casing. So these are plastic uh, gears there um, or case gear. This bevel gear on the outside is gonna be plastic composite. Um, and then the uh, Spectrum DX3 Smart DSMR with the 6200A receiver, SR6200A. So that is interesting. So looking here, um, again, most of the stuff that we've seen already, uh, oil-filled shocks with the silicone O-rings, which they added in the last variation, which has been uh, a huge help, and it stopped those leaky shocks that used to be on the 3S lineup. I have several 3S cars, you guys. I think this one is wanting to put its uh, name out there for the top running spot of the 3S lineup. That is for sure. Um, I have the Sentin 3S, uh, I had the Granite 3S, which I loved. Big Rock 3S is one of my favorite um, RC bash vehicles. Just this 3S lineup really speaks my language. So let's get out of the box and we'll talk about it as we're doing that. Alrighty, this thing has not been opened whatsoever. The seals are still stuck here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them first time. Get them both done here. We uh, are really literally looking at this for the very first time with you. And I'm excited about it. I did not know this was coming. It just showed up on my doorstep. That looks pretty cool. All right. So it definitely doesn't feel as wide, I would say maybe as the big rock. So as I was saying, the 3S lineup really speaks to me these days. Uh, there's just something about having one battery to stick into a car that I really like. Uh, it makes it super easy on you. You get lo lots more runtime because instead of running charging two 3S batteries and running one vehicle, I'm charging two 3S batteries and I'm getting lifetime out of it. I'm getting longevity of run. When I charge up two 3S batteries, I could put it in a 6S vehicle and, you know, have one set of runtime for it, or uh, I can have two batteries that will give me even more runtime. So basically double the fun. These already go 60 miles an hour on 3S, 50 miles an hour, even if it's not 60 with the pinion in it, it's stinking fast enough. Uh, they're out of control crazy fast, in my opinion, uh, at that speed. So it really does speak my language, and I really, really like it. All right, so let's talk about what we do get in the box here. You do get this DX3 radio, which are nice. It's got this extra channel here that you could use for things. Power buttons on the rear. Throttle limits. You've got um, 50, 75, and 100 options. Uh, throttle neutral and reverse. And then your steering neutral reverse on the side here. That is where it'll show you the battery level remaining for your vehicle. And then you've got all of your typical uh, trims on the side here with the AVC or your steering rate. For this, it's gonna be AVC. You wanna turn it off, you turn it down. The nice thing about the Bluetooth module, I will say, is that it does allow you to make adjustments to your steering rate and that through using the module and your phone and uh, it's pretty easy to install both things. I can actually just show you here the installation of it. You do wanna have something on hand to pry this little open thing open, but your Bluetooth module is gonna go right into here, like so, and it just pushes down in there. Uh, you will have to bind it when you have uh, battery power for it to get it bound up, but not a big deal to do. Super easy, and then if you have uh, this, we'll just get set up for it. 
that clips on and replaces this little piece. And now you can hold your phone right up here and run the app. So that is the cool thing about having this radio for this vehicle is going to let us see some of the stuff in real time um, about this car as far as power usage, battery, all of that right here on our phone. So uh, the only thing I will say I do wish is I wish that it allowed it to turn up a little more because I would like to, if I'm not using that feature, use it to record my car driving uh, with this same exact adapter. That would be a nice touch uh, if that were able to be done. You'd have to raise this up a little bit so that it could tilt a little more. But having that ability to use this also to film while you're driving would be super cool. So just putting that out there, Spectrum. Very nice the way that this is all integrated, but you know maybe one step further in giving us something that we can also use for recording our cars and putting more uh, of your vehicles in that on YouTube with ease, right? All right, so let's get this out of the way. Manuals are good. It gives you a lot of useful tips about setting up your car. Also how to program your ESC right here. Shows you what it's set at. It's already set to LiPo low uh, cutoff voltage, low voltage cutoff threshold. Uh, it's showing that our brake strength is 62.5. Punch is level three out of five and all the rest. It only can go to 6.0 volts on this particular BEC on this uh, ESC. So uh, you want to hold on to this. There's another one here as well. And this one is showing you how to um, basically get in there, tighten up your slipper, how it you know, goes together, all that. Uh, and this is also going to have our parts explosions. So we want to look up this part number here and see what arms this is using because I think that this is using the shorter chassis like the granite and the shorter arms, unlike the big rock, which has the longer like Sentin chassis and the arms from the, um, the Typhon buggy. So um, I think that's how that works with their, their lineup. I have to look online and get that all for sure. Um, there's so many cars out, it's getting hard to memorize all of it, but let's, uh, let's pull that up and see. All right, so we're looking up what the arm of Big Rock uses. So I'm going to try and pull up their manuals and support, and we're going to see the exploded view, just like what we're looking at here. And try and see what arms they're using. So they're using 330543. And this is using 330443 uh, for this, which I believe is going to be what the granite uses. Same thing, we're going to scroll down to manuals and support and see the exploded view. And so, yes, it is using the same front arm. And what about chassis? This is running the 320607, which is the same chassis as this. So they're similar there, and it's going to run similar uh, rear arms as well, which are the, okay, the 516, which we were looking at before, is right here on the granite. So very similar part-wise to the granite. Here is the baggie of goodies that it comes with, and it does actually include that pinion gear, that optional speed gear, it looks like, right in here. Check that out. It's got the little D, D-style pinion that they've been using right there, so it only can slide onto the motor shaft one way. And uh, it also has a clip that holds it on. So if it does, for whatever reason, start to back off, it will be captured by the little E-clip that's on there. So very cool that it does come with this. Uh, there's extra little body clip retainers in here. There's a wrench in here. And then you've got your shock spacers here to be able to set your preload. So there are preload spacers and there's handfuls of those in here. Um, so nice little goodie bag of extra stuff 
And then you've got this funky looking, they've reinvented the multi-tool that comes with the RCs. Check that guy out. So, got the larger size here, smaller, medium size for like your wheel nuts to get them on and off and tightened. And uh, we'll take a quick look while we got this out and see what kind of a uh, hex size we're running on this. I'm gonna guess it's a 14 millimeter hex. Yep, so it's running a 14 millimeter hex on the wheel, which is good. Uh, you can see while it's off, lots of plastic up here, plastic arms, adjustable turnbuckles up there underneath here, plastic drive shafts, uh, adjustable turnbuckle here as well. Um, but plastic is flexible and these cars, it helps to make durable in my opinion, having that plastic. There's only a few things I would probably consider changing to aluminum on these because I like to have that flex uh, when they hit. Not too much flex, but enough that it won't bend and stay bent which is what metal will do, or it'll transfer the brake to some place that's more, more difficult to fix. So I like it when brakes are easy to manage. Alrighty guys, let's take a look at this car because this paint job is really, really cool. Around the front here, it's got like a splatter paint job. Arma always has really cool artwork, I think. I'm a big fan of their design team. So, like what they've done with the body here, the splatter's cool, I think. Red, white, blue, black, just feels very, very nice. And, um, you know, it's not your traditional blue for the red, white, and blue theme. It's a little bit of a lighter blue, but it looks, it looks sharp. So, body feels pretty good, a little bit rigid. It's got the nice retainers here. We're gonna take it off, look at the underside. It's got some extra bracing here as well to notice so that when it hits on this type of stuff, it'll prevent some of the cracking along this area. So that is nice. They've got lots of nice little tucks in here, little details uh, with the body to kind of help make it a little bit more rigid in places and then scoop out, keeps it nice and narrow, scoops out down there by that tub chassis, which is, Nice and elevated to keep junk out. Check that out, right? So these stone guards here, this nice wall along the side, uh, it's backed in silver. Don't just bash, blast. And you can see how they've gone ahead and mounted and added some stiffening that comes out here for the, uh, the wing. And then the bracing here for the body, uh, but also to give it that skid guard help save your body when you roll over and you're skidding across the top of it. And these are replaceable, so you can just buy new ones if they get all marred up. But looks good. Alrighty, now we're looking at the inside of the vehicle. You can see plastic shocks up front and all of the different pieces that we've talked about that are plastic in there as well. It does have those adjustable turnbuckles here so you can set um, basically your toe and also your camber of the wheels. You've got the toe settings here in the rear to be able to kick them in or out how you want the, uh, the wheels to be. They look fairly straight. The rear ones do look to be towed in just a little bit, which we find a lot with these um, vehicles is that the, the rear wheels have just that slightest degree of toe in. They're kind of leaning inward um, towards the center of the chassis and that's just to give it a little bit more stability. Uh, the front ones are actually towed out and so that's to help with steering and then they do the toe in to kind of make up for it. So these ones kind of toe out just a little bit and uh, it is adjustable so you can make changes to that so that is nice at least for the front. In the rear you don't have that adjustability. It is just your camber. So, um, looking at the inside here of the chassis, it does have a plastic center drive shaft. It is telescoping, which is how you are able to pull it out so easily. It does not have that bearing set 
that um, kind of holds it in place and keeps it from moving. It is something you can buy aftermarket. I bought it for one of my other ones. Um, and so that should fit in here as well. Uh, right here you're seeing that 100 amp ESC by Spectrum. Got a little pack here on uh, the power cable, little cap pack type thing. Help keep voltage levels constant. Um, IC5 connector, this is a smart connector. It's got that smart gray cable in here and that is gonna send that data from the battery through the ESC to your receiver and let it tell your controller how much battery's left, kind of power usage, all of that, which is really cool. On off switch is tucked up here as well as the button for programming um, is set right there. That motor is tucked in there. You can see 3200 kV with the fan and heat sink set up on the top. Got a little bit of honeycombing in here, give a little bit extra rigidity to the chassis in the front and the back. Um, thick uh, shock towers that are kind of capture both sides of the shock instead of having the screw just hanging out with the shock on it, which can tend to bend. You've got both sides of that bolt captured and that really does help with uh, taking some abuse and some hits up there. Uh, and I've, I've found it to be very strong. I've actually never broke one of these plastic shock towers yet. Uh, front bumper here is pretty stiff. Um, it'll take, it should take a good hit there. You can hear the gears in there working. Wheelie bar in the rear throw down power and it, it hits pretty quick. It's pretty low. Um, you can see from the side here. We'll zoom out. We'll zoom out here so you can see it is, it sits pretty low. So when it hits, I mean, if you're under compression, it'll, it might even be stay lower. Um, but that's nice. Again, I, I'm wondering if they're making this to be a little bit more about going fast based on the tires and things. So we're gonna get out there and rip it and see and find out what we, uh, how this thing handles. But overall, you can see again, you do have the adjustability in the rear on the tops. And so these are plastic shock bodies, plastic caps, um, and they do now have those silicone rings in there, which should make them retain their oil a lot better than the early generations of the BLX. So that's good. Arma's been listening. I'll tell you what, you guys. It's exciting to see some of the stuff that they're coming out with because you can see the different ways that they're listening and they're making and adapting and uh, really working with the, the people that are using the cars, which is us, because uh, they're trying to give us stuff that they know we're going to love. So here's that servo, that new Spectrum. So that is nice that these uh, BLX have that upgraded servo in them now for previous generations. So I think all that's really left for us to do is to strap in one of our Spectrum G2 batteries in here and get this thing ready to rip. All right, I do like to strap my battery cables down in here just to keep it from flopping around too much. Get it nice and and tight in there, looking good. I'm gonna set that down. I do have some batteries I'm gonna go ahead and put in. You do have to provide your own batteries, charger, and all of that. All right, I'm not gonna go ahead and bind this up yet and do any of that, but we're gonna go ahead and power this up, make sure everything's working. Right turns right, left turns left. Go up and give a little throttle. That's definitely forward, reverse. Yep, everything seems to be working as it should. All right, so let's talk about how this AVC works really quickly. If you're unfamiliar with the active vehicle control, if it's turned all the way down, all the way off, it's running like a car, uh, RC car from the past. You pick it up, doesn't do anything. Only way to get input is to do it yourself um, for steering. However, if I turn up the AVC, say to 50%, the car is being told it's going straight right now. It's going to want to keep going straight. It's going to help you if you're not putting, if it's sliding, you can see those front tires are reacting and they're turning in to try and make it stay straight. 
and it's doing that even in the air. So that's that active vehicle control. You turn it way up, it'll really quickly adjust. And every little movement is gonna do it. I don't think I would ever really go up much more than 50, just for little adjustments. I personally like it off so I can make the truck react how I want. If I want it to break free, it will, um, but you don't get any adjustment. But if you're just learning, uh, it does help. However, if you're going really high speeds, um, you want to have this low to off. That is something that I've learned. Um, when it's up too high, the car starts shaking because it's just it's trying to keep it straight and it gets really out of control. So I would say back that down. If you're going for speed runs, even turn it all the way off um, or put it up just the littlest bit to help you. But there's a lot of things with doing speed runs you'd have to learn anyway. And hopefully you'll be up to that point where you're driving it without that uh, on there. So uh, let's get the body on here and we're going to get ready for a bash, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this. Bash video to come. We'll have speed runs as well as a separate video to see how fast we can get this thing going on a 3S LiPo battery with the stock pinion in it first. Um, and then we'll do the Bluetooth module and show you how to connect all this up and get all the different run information on it. So thanks for tuning in as always, guys. Have fun RCing. We'll catch you next time.